<coughs> Zera Shimshon, welcome. Let's get right into it. Parashat Kedoshim. I'm sorry, that was last week. Parashat Emor. Zera Shimshon says the following. He has a few different things to talk about this week's parasha. There's two drashot here. I want to at least get to the first one and we'll see how we'll do. Maybe we'll do the second one too if we have the time because I'm a little bit short. He brings the Midrash in the Yakut Shimoni. He says the following Amar Rabbi Yoshua de Sikhnin Bishem Rabbi Levi. Rabbi Yoshua from Sikhnin said the name of Rabbi Levi. Melamed Shehera Hakadosh Baruchu Le Moshe Dor Dor Veshofetav. He's darshaning the first pasuk in the six parasha, which means, which is, Emor el Kohanim. Hashem says to Moshe, Emor el Kohanim. Say to the Kohanim, X, Y, Z, the, all the laws that pertain to them, the specific laws. That's the beginning of the parasha. On this, the Midrash explains what this verse means in the depth. One of the meanings is that Hashem showed Moshe every generation, every future generation that was to come, and he showed him the leaders of that generation, the judges, the leaders of, that gener- of each generation. Dor Dor of Dor Shav. He showed him every generation and the darshaners, the, the leaders, the, the teachers, the expounders of Torah of each generation. Ver'ahu Sha'ul. And eventually they, they uh, reached the generation of Sha'ul, Sha'ul HaMelech, King Saul, the first king, the first sovereign king of a, an established Jewish state, if you will, a Jewish kingdom. Ver'ahu Sha'ul. He showed him Sha'ul. Uvanav noflim b'chayrev. He showed him how Shaul and his sons all died by the sword. So a little bit of knowledge, background is required about uh, the prophet, the, 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 by the Bible, the Tanakh, Sefer Shemuel, the book of Samuel specifically. That's where it talks about Shaul's life and David's life. They all died by the sword. Right? Famously, Shaul died by falling on the sword. He was famously uh, depressed. He, he, he thought David was an enemy. He thought David was a, was a, was a uh, challenge uh, to, to the throne. And he pursued him. I mean, I mean, and many interesting stories in history there to look into. At the end of the day, Shaul, Shaul's men and David's men always fought each other. Shaul fought other people as well, other uh, goyim, many wars. He ended up falling on the sword and dying. What that means is a whole topic on its own. Amar Lo, but once Moshe was showed this, that Shuala Melech died by the sword, once Moshe saw this, he asked a question to Hashem. He says, Melech Rishon She'omed al Banecha Yidakir Bahayref? He says, Hashem, does it make sense that the first king that was appointed to leave your children, God, the first official king that he should die by sword, is it proper? He asks him. Hashem answers to Moshe, to Moshe and you are telling this to me say it to the Kohanim that he killed who are challenging who are uh, 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 what's the word prosecuting him in Shamayim right? the, the Kohanim are prosecuting Shaul HaMelech in Shamayim and uh, the, the connection to, the, to, the, to our parasha is that Hashem uses the same words. Emor le Kohanim. Hashem says, don't say it to me. Don't complain to me, Moshe. Emor le Kohanim. Say it to the Kohanim. That's what the parasha starts with, to say with the Kohanim. But what is he saying over? He's saying over that basically the Kohanim in Shamaim are challenging uh, that Shaul deserves a punishment. Now what happened over there? You have to know again, you have to know a little bit of history here. Shaul died because of the sin of what he did to a city called Nov. A city called Nov was a city full of Kohanim. The Kohanim lived over there. And Shaul HaMelech had them all killed. The entire city butchered because he uh, understood that the city of Nov was in allegiance with David, who was, again, challenging the, the, the throne of, Shaul, uh, of Shaul. And he believed that they were righteously, since they were challenging the king, they righteously deserved death. They challenged the throne. And he ended up killing the entire city. Now that was wrong on his part, 
And for that, he got punished. And for that, he got punished. And that's what Hashem says to Moshe. Now there's Hashem Shonaz, a, a few questions on this Midrash. Mutamua, this is confusing. The Lama Davka Hiksha Moshe why did Moshe specifically ask his question? He really wants to break down his question into the details. Why did, what was the premise of Moshe's question? Just, cause, just because uh, Shaul was the first king and doesn't deserve to dab, uh, the, he, it's improper for him to dab with the sword? What's the connection? How else should he have died? Right? Why specifically? What, what, what implication, what challenge does Moshe have against the way in which he died? Or what difference does he make that he was the first king? What if he was the second king? What if he was the second, third, fifth king of, of Israel? And he, died of, and he died of the sword. Would that be more proper in Moshe's eyes? Why is Moshe specifically asking, first king, died by the sword? What is the premise of his question, basically? Also, what does it mean when the, when the Midrash says that Hashem answered Moshe, he said that in Shemaim, the, the Kohanim are challenging him, are challenging, are prosecuting Against Shaul. What does that mean? Are we to assume that if those Kohanim and Shemaim were not prosecuting against Shaul, that Shaul should not have been punished? Should they, that, she, she, that he should have gotten away with the sin of killing the entire city of Kohanim? That's, that's what it seems like to be implied. Now the Zerushim Shon answers, little by little. He says, V'yesh Nomad, you can answer, Shekatvu HaMefrashim, the, explain, the uh, commentators, specifically it's the Kinnat Starim in Echa. He explains the following. It's also brought down in a very famous sefer called the Asara Mamarot. Ten sayings, right? Very famous sefer. He explains a lot of deep things over there. He explains why did Shaul Amelech have the merit to become the first king? What tribe was he from? He was in the tribe of Binyamin. This we know it's documented in the Tanakh. Why, of all the tribes of Israel, 12 tribes, 13 if you count the two sons of Yosef, why? Specifically, did the tribe of Binyamin have the schut to have someone from their tribe, Shaul, be the first king? The answer is, he says, the Sefer Asalam Amarot, because back when Yaakov Avinu was preparing to meet Esav, and he had a triple plan. He prayed, he sent him gifts, and he prepared for war. Right? This is Parashat Vayishlach. Uh, and as they approached, as Esav approached closer and closer to the camp of Yaakov, Yaakov had split up his camp into several camps, and as it, each one passed by, they would bow down, right? And then the, camp, the camps um, among them were, were the tribes, the, right? All the sons um, and, his, and his wives and all his people. And they all bowed down to Esav one by one in efforts to appease him. Now we know it worked, it worked at, the, at the end of the day. There was no war. However, one person was not there. Who was that? Binyamin. Binyamin was not born yet. Binyamin was born after that encounter. And therefore, since he wasn't born yet, he couldn't have bowed down to Esav. And since he didn't bow down to Esav, therefore, it was proper that from his um, tribe in the future would come the first king, Shaul, who would spend many of his years battling the descendants of Esav, the Goim, Amalek, and others. He never subjugated himself to the power of Esav. That wasn't in their seed of Binyamin. That's why Shaul was able to do that. And he was specifically chosen for that purpose. Right? But further than that, he says here, When they bowed down to Esav, Esav is like the king of what we, what's called the Sitra Akhra, the other side, right? The dark side of things. The deeper wisdom teaches that everything has a balance. There's the light forces and spiritual uh, uh, um, holy and pure forces. And there's the opposite of that, right? This creates the balance in the world. This creates free will. This creates the ability to, to go to, for a human being to choose the good and overcome the bad. Aisav is the figurehead of that bad, right? He's all about evil, deen, blood, etc. You know, arayot, all these things. 
That's what he represents. He, you know, along with Lavan, along with Bil'am, along with uh, the Yetzir Hara, the Malach Hamabit, it says the Gemara, they're all in one basket. They're all the same, on the same team. And as they bowed down one by one, they gave more power over to that side. Masha'in can Binyamin. Binyamin, however, did not do that. Shalom Ayah by Adayin Ba'olam, who wasn't born yet. Therefore, that's why he merited to have Shaul and Melech come out from him. Who was the first king of Israel. Again, like we said, whose job it was to defeat those evil powers. And furthermore, he brings the Zohar Kadosh over here. Parashat Balak, Daf Kuf Tzadi Bet over there, it says, When Hashem came to give the Torah, Ba El Saro, Shil Isab, he came to the ministering angel that represents that team of Isab in Shamayim. Amar lo, and Hashem said to him, I'm sorry, the, uh, the ministering angel of Isab said to Hashem, Ibn Shil Olam, Master of the Universe, Halokativ Ba, isn't it written in your Torah? Lo Tirzach. Right, so what happened here was Hashem offered the Torah to give to Isab. And uh, the negotiation was happening between him and the ministering angel of Esav. And the angel answered back, Hashem, don't you have a commandment in there that says you shall not kill? Isn't that part of the contract in the Torah? Hashem says, yes, of course. And then the angel says, I can't, hang, I can't accept it. Why? The killing is my actual bracha that in your same Torah that you gave. Right? That's what Yitzchak Avinu blessed Esav with after he cried and begged for a blessing. Yitzchak Abinu gave Esav a bracha, you shall live by your sword. Your sword. What does the sword represent? Murder, killing, violence. Right? So the minister of Israel Esav said, how can my people accept it when their bracha, the way they live, the way they're, 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 their purpose in this world, right? Their very core is violence and killing. Rather says the angel, give it to the seed of Yaakov. Give it to them. Hashem said to him, Ten li ech Yaakov. Give me advice, he asked the angel. It's very interesting, this, this requires deep analysis. What do you mean Hashem is asking for advice from an angel? This, well, Hashem doesn't know. Of course he knows. There's deep things being to- spoken about here. Nevertheless, let's read it on, let's read it, read it on a surface level. Hashem asked the, this angel of Esau, give me a, uh, advice on how I should uh, approach Yaakov's seed, Yaakov's offspring, to convince him to take the Torah. Amar lo, he said to him, Ten lahem chilek echad mishali lematana. Give them a portion of my gift as a gift. I mean, give, give them a portion of my bracha to them. That they should be able to control and use the attribute of the sword. A certain measure of fighting and violence. How? So they should have the ability to judge capital cases, right? Not, not just to kill Stam, but to use the, the, the power of execution that Torah commands in certain situations. Someone is Mechel Shabbat and he gets caught and witnesses or, you know, etc. All, all the things that are Chayav Mita in the Torah. If, the, if a righteous Beit Dilan at the time of Zbit Nidash wanted to, you know, uh, fulfill the, the, that part of the Torah, they would have to have the ability to execute. And that's, the, that's a certain power of the sword, right? One of the executions is four types. One of them is, is Hedig. Hedig means decapitation of the sword. Because if you don't give, so then the angel said, give them some of my power. Because if you don't, they would not be able to use the power of the, of the sword at all. That's what the Zohar says. With that background, the Zohar Shemchun is going to answer the question. He says, Now we can learn from here. That Shaul merited to become the king, to be the first king of Am Yisrael, as we said, because Binyamin never bowed down to Esav, never gave the power over to Esav. But nevertheless, the nation of Israel, they use the sword according to the right, the right way, the right, honest way, to uphold God's Torah. And the reason why they have that is because of the, the gift that the ministering angel Nisab gave to them. We said that. 
ועל זה קשה לאל למשה. And that's why Moshe's question, and in our original Midrash, that's where Moshe's question is, is uh, rooted in, in these concepts. How? He's, his question was the following. איך יתקן? How can it be Hashem? He says. שמי שהיה מלך ראשון, מפני שלא ישתחווה לעשיו, that the person who became the first king, right, that's why he mentioned first, meaning Shaul was the first king because of a certain merit that Binyamin had, the tribe of Binyamin had. And that was like we explained, that he didn't bow down to Esav. That he didn't give over the power to Esav, which means that Esav should not be able to overrule him. Esav's blessing of killing should not be able to affect Shaul. How can it be then, that Shaul died by sword? That uh, Esav, Esav's angel gave that power over to the Jews. Right? So the question was again, if Shaul merited, because he didn't bite down to Esav. That's why he's the first king. And we know that the Jews got a portion of the blessing of the sword. If that's the case, how could it be that, he, they ne- that Shaul nevertheless died by Esav's blessing of the sword? How could it be? Does it make sense? How could he die by something that he was given, and that he earned? It doesn't make sense. It's a contradiction. And that's why Hashem answered him, He told him about the Kohanim. He says, the, it's all about the Kohanim that Shaul killed in the city of Nov. That they challenge him. They prosecute him in Shamayim that he needs to pay for that sin. Which means, Because when Shaul killed the whole city, of the Kohanim and Nov, he did it with a sword, right? That was the power. That's how you do it. There's no other way to do it. With a sword, but that killing of the sword was a non-righteous way of killing. It wasn't the good side of the sword, the good power of the sword that was apportioned over to Am Yisrael. It was Esav's original sword. It was Esav's original usage of the sword, which is, which is unrighteous killing. So once Shaul tapped into Esav's portion of the sword, unrighteously killing them. At that point, he gave power over to Sitar Achal again, just like the tribes before him when they bowed down to Esav, when they were meeting him. And therefore, that whole benefit that the tribe of Binyamin had, of not bowing down to him, was lost at that moment. It was, it was gone once he did what he did. That was the issue. That's the answer of the Zerish Mishon. If you want to say, my Hazit, he has a very technical question now. He says, fine. If you propose to say, basically there was two reasons, right? There was two reasons why Shaul had the benefit on his side. Number one is because he's from Benjamin. He's from the tribe of Benjamin. And they didn't bring down to Esav. And number two was, that the angel gave over a portion of the blessing of the sword to Am Yisrael, of which Shaul is a nation, is, is the, leading of the leader of the nation when he was a king. Right? So the explanation here says, which means, why are you looking, when you're judging Shaul, why are you looking at what he did in the city of Nov by killing all the Kohanim? Instead, look at the fact that he's from the tribe of Binyamin, and therefore he should have that special zhut. Right? The im mitzadehad natan la koach, that if you want to say that by killing the city of Nov, he gave the Sitra Ahra, which is Esav's, you know, team, power, like we explained, like he used the sword in the wrong way. But to the khair, what about the other side? That Binyamin, didn't, uh, that Binyamin did not give power, right? The tribe of Binyamin, from which Shaul is from, did not give power to Esav by not bowing down, because he couldn't bow down, he wasn't alive. So therefore, they, those two should cancel each other out. Why should Shaul be punished for that? That he should be at neutral, right? If you consider both of those things together, they should cancel. They should they should cancel each other out. Nevertheless, answers the uh, Zerish Mishon don't think that way. 
אפילו אחי, even so, העדיפה, this fact of what he killed, when Shaul killed the whole city of Nov, it was more greater, it was much more grave than what uh, Benjamin, not bowing down to Esav, could have uh, protected him for. It was just too much. And that's why Hashem answered the, the question to Moshe in that way. He said that the Kohanim are prosecuting, that the fact that he killed the Kohanim, it trumps. It's, a, it's much stronger, it's a much more severe than whatever Zchud Binyamin could have had by not bowing down to Esav. Davka, right? Mikatrim Oto Davka. The word Oto, him, that they're prosecuting him, it means they're prosecuting Shaul specifically because Shitzad uh, Hachova, he Shelo Mamash. It was his fault. It was his. Oto means him, which means it's point, singling him out. It was specifically his fault that he went too far across the line by killing the city of Nov. And furthermore, the, the killing of the city of Nov was his direct action, his direct uh, sin. Whereas the zchut of not bowing down to Esav was not his direct thing. It wasn't him who, who, who did that. It was his great, 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 great grandfather, Benjamin, who couldn't have even done it because he wasn't alive. Which means it's the zchut of his fathers, of his ancestry. It's not him, his directly. So when it comes to that, that's why what he did directly trumped, it, it, it overpowered the zchut that, the, that his father, Benjamin, his group. His ancestor Benjamin gave him. That's why, according to the, the, the uh, measurement of the law, it was appropriate that he should die by the sword, and it all fits. Let's leave it right there, Rabotai. We shall continue next week. Amen.